What's up guys, going to do another knife review. Uh, this review is on the new gen Cold Seal Recon 1. And I'm going to start this review off with the, the negative things uh, about this knife. Things I don't like about it, things I wish were different. Um, there's really only three things, uh, and out of those three things, only one of those items really bugs me. And the, one that, the thing that bugs me the most is the pocket clip. Um, and I find, in general, cold steel knives have uh, horrible pocket clips. I think they make some awesome, awesome, great knives. Uh, not all of them, but a few of them are, uh, are excellent knives, particularly for the money. But uh, their pocket clips stink, and almost on every single cold steel knife, when I get one, you know, a new folding knife from cold steel, I'm always excited about the knife, and the pocket clip's always the same deal. It's always way too tight. Uh, now this one is no exception. In fact, I'll grab my little faux pocket, and we'll test this out together here. And I'll show you what the deal is with this. Um, pocket clip... The length on it, it's fine. It's it's kind of stubby. I mean, look at the, the knife and look at the pocket clip. Uh, you know, most pocket clips, generally speaking, have uh, at least half the length of the knife, if not like three quarters of the length. But uh, I'm not really concerned with the length too much. It's not a big deal. It's there to keep in your pocket. It's not there to be you know stuck in there permanently. It's just the fact that it, it's just so stiff, and uh, it's a real pain to get in and out of the pocket. Now, of course, this is a little bit of a thicker pocket, being denim. Uh, pants here, but uh, let me show you putting this in. You can't just put it in with one hand. You have to kind of lift up the pocket clip to get it started on the, on the material. Then you really have to push down in there. All right, so here it is in a pair of jeans. Okay, you can see how it rides. I have no issues whatsoever with the length. Although, if you, <laughs> let me show you something else in a second here. But anyway, you can see it's okay. It's a normal pocket knife in the pocket. Not a big deal, right? Getting the thing out of the pocket is a real chore. Okay, it's two reasons. First off, the pocket clip is very tight, but number two, the uh, G10, the texturing on here is extremely, extremely aggressive. So the combination of those two uh, issues makes uh, for a very slow knife. Um, annoyingly slow to get out of your pocket. In fact, uh, I've been carrying this knife in uh, mostly uh, I have one pair of jeans that I, I carried in when I happen to be using it, but most of the time in the summertime I'm wearing uh, khaki uh, or cargo uh, style shorts. And the material is, is a little bit thinner and it's not as much as a, uh, of an issue than denim. However, um, even with the thinner material, it's still like I go to take my knife out and it just pulls my the material. My uh, Bring this back for a second. Let's assume here's my pocket, a little bit thinner material. Right, and I go to take it out, and it just it lifts my shorts like all the way up, you know, a couple inches until I finally have to kind of brace my pants with my other hand and just tug on it to get it out. So it's definitely been a carry issue for me. All right, so that's the, the biggest the biggest issue on this entire night for me is pocket clip, and it's pretty much look at that took some material with it. Um, just chews up the pants. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, the second issue I have is not as bad, and that's the fact that it's just a huge knife. Um, the weight of it, particularly because it's summertime and I'm wearing lighter clothing, I have shorts on, I have if I have pants, they're thinner material pants, they're not really heavy duty or, or real thick or heavy. Um, so I find that it kind of just, it's like a lead weight on my side. And ever since I started carrying a gun, I've gotten used to uh, carrying a lot more weight. My EDC is, is kind of heavy, lots of different you know gear on me all the time, and it's, it hasn't been an issue. But even with a gun on my side, I notice this knife a lot more. It's just like, holy crap, you know, it's this big hunk of weight, you know, just in your pocket. And as I walk around, it's just kind of like, boop, 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 hit my leg and flopping all around and just, it's just cumbersome. Uh, in the winter time, it's not an issue. It really is not an issue. In fact, there's a lot of other larger knives I carry during the winter. But, uh, you know, especially since you have gloves on, it's it's easier to manipulate larger knives. But, uh, in the summertime, it just it hasn't been very good. It hasn't been a great carry knife uh, at all for me. Of course, this some people don't have as much of an issue with weight. And I really, I rarely ever complain about a knife being too heavy or too big. But this one for me was just, it's just too heavy. It's cumbersome. There's nothing else I can really say about it besides that. Now the third issue, which is probably going to be the most obvious here, and that is the, the coating. Uh, it's just a straight Teflon coating on this knife. It's literally the same crap you have you know, inside of your cheap frying pans to keep the food from sticking to the metal. It's Teflon. 
and it scratches very easily and it wears very easily. Uh, what I did with this knife is I started getting so much wear in the top, upper portion of the belly here and the, uh, the front of the blade that I just took um, some sandpaper and very crudely, very quickly just removed the rest of it on the, uh, the, where the grind starts here uh, towards the top and of course uh, on the, uh, the front there on the tip. I just did it on both sides just to give a cleaner look to the knife. It's not, I just, I didn't like it really all scratched up. And I really, I, I rarely ever am worried about or complain about scratching, you know, scratches on a knife because I use my knives. And I don't mind some scratches. It's like little war wounds, you know. It is what it is, you know. Do you complain about a scratch on a screwdriver, you know, or a hammer? It's just, it's just, it happens, you know. They're tools, you're going to use them, they're going to get a little bit beat up. But uh, it was just ridiculous. I, I haven't had a knife in a long time that had a coated blade like that where it just it wore so much and so fast. But uh, this is one of the least worrisome issues with this knife for me because looks for me aren't everything. Of course we want our knives to look cool and look good. But uh, I just didn't like it. So I, I just did kind of a two-tone deal here. And uh, to be honest, I think it'd be pretty cool if they came like this from the factory. Obviously minus these other scratches, but... If they left the uh, the flats here black and did a satin or some kind of a polished uh, finish uh, for the grinds themselves, I think it's generally a uh, aesthetically looking combination. I always like two-tone blades, but anyway, so that's the deal with this. It doesn't come like this. It was originally all black. It just it got scratched to crap, so I cleaned it up a little. That's the deal with that. You can see there, the Recon 1. Okay, so moving on. Those are the three things that... Uh, just kind of, I don't know, <laughs> they just bug me a little bit. Um, again, quick recap, pocket clip is the biggest issue for me. Just too tight. I just, it's too, too aggressive. So, little tip on the pocket clip, and before I get to that, I'm going to show you something else. It just seems a little bit of a crude design. It looks like the clip was just kind of slapped on there. You can see it even exceeds the edge of the knife there. It just looks like it's out of place or misaligned, you know? you think they'd scoot it down a little bit there for a crisper, cleaner look overall. But it looks like it's just kind of slapped on there. Um, and on the reverse, you can see it's actually meant to be there because it is uh, swappable to the other side for right or left hand carry. Although there's no uh, um, no option to carry this a, uh, in a tip down configuration. It's only a tip up carry knife. But I can see on the reverse side here, same deal. It just the bevel on the edge here comes around it's just like the screws right there it just it just seems sloppy um, aesthetically I really don't care that much it's just something I've noticed and I want to you know obviously repeat in a review but uh, as far as functionality it really has nothing to do with anything it's still a pocket clip it still holds a thing in your pocket so uh, functionally it works fine it's just a little bit of annoyance if you're kinda OCD it would probably bug you um, but anyway just a quick little note if you do want to modify your pocket clip it's very easy to do. Uh, do not do it on your knife. You might be tempted to go, oh man, this is tight, and take some pliers or you know put something underneath here to pry it up to loosen it a little bit. Don't do that because when you put pressure on this up like that, obviously you're putting um, tension on those screws, and there's a chance they'll just rip right out. And if they strip right out of the the, uh, the handle here, you're screwed. Uh, pun intended there. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. Uh, take all three screws out, and if you could see there. They are Torx screws, so get the appropriate size uh, Torx driver and remove those. Uh, put your the end here of the uh, clip in a vise, um, or just hold it you know stiffly in a, a pair of pliers or something, and then just bend the out uh, outside here just a little bit, the tiniest bit. Do not over bend it because if you bend it too much and then it's sticking way out here and it's too loose and then you keep bending it back and forth, you get a weaken you know where it's bending and eventually it'll just snap off. So be careful. Just a little will do it, you know. And that's all I would really suggest is if you get one of these things brand new, take the puck clip off, bend it a little bit, you know, before you even try to throw it on the pants. I think you'll be, you'll be happy with that. Um, but once it loosens up a little bit, it's fine. It's very functional. There's nothing wrong with it as far as it actually working. It's just, just a little bit of an annoyance to me. Uh, the weight and size, there's nothing you can do about. It is what it is. If you, if you don't like big knives, you probably wouldn't buy it anyway. So it's kind of redundant to say, yeah, it's heavy. Uh, I think that's kind of obvious. Uh, and then the last thing, obviously, um, like I said before, the uh, the coating on here, it's just preference. Some people don't like the way it looks worn. All right, so that was my 10 minutes. I'm back. Um, anyway, I was just saying the uh, the blade and the coating wearing off. 
If you're one of those people who like to use your knives but also keep them pretty nice looking, you're kind of a collector and a user, uh, I kind of float back and forth. I went from being a collector to a user to a collector and user and I, I, go, I go back and forth all the time. Um, but if you do like your knives to look nice, uh, it's not a super cheap knife but I would really recommend getting two of them. Get one, throw it in the display case or keep it in your collection and use the other one. Okay, because if you do use it, it will wear very quickly and it will look like a used knife. So if you're not into scratches and dings and all that kind of crap, um, maybe it's not the knife for you. Um, but I do think that uh, it was a smart move going with the Teflon because it also keeps the manufacturing price down. You know, you throw on something a little bit more durable, guess what? It's going to cost you more, more money. And what do you do? You have to pass it on to the consumer. So now it's, it's no longer a more affordable knife, it starts growing in price. And you start tweaking this and doing that, and ooh, let's make this a little bit better. And then all of a sudden, it's not the same knife. It's a much more expensive knife. So there's always a reason behind things. You know, it's a work knife. It's not meant for someone who doesn't want a little itty bitty scratch on their blade. You know, if you're fondling your knives and looking under my, you know, a microscope looking for scratches, get yourself a really expensive knife and don't use the thing. But uh, it is really, uh, you know, an average Joe's uh, working knife, and I think a lot of people appreciate that. Um, the blade steel on here is uh, an AUS 8A stainless steel. It is on the softer side, but this also goes with the whole theme of, hey, I really want to actually use my knife. And I think that um, it was another great choice, not only for, uh, for price, it does still keep the, the overall price of the knife down, but it is a softer steel. So A, uh, if you're putting this under a uh, tremendous amount of stress, uh, it will pr it's prone to rolling, you know, if you're, if you're cutting something, if you're really aggressive in uh, cutting wood uh, with this knife uh, or plastic, it'll have a tendency of rolling over because it's softer as opposed to chipping or actually snapping. So uh, it is a, a better choice for steel, I think, for a hard use knife, a little bit of a softer steel. So, and plus the biggest beneficiary, uh, um, and plus, the biggest uh, benefit of having a softer steel like that is it's easy to sharpen. And yes, it's very easy to sharpen. In fact, in a second here, I've used this knife, I've sharpened this, uh, I've used this knife probably, I've used this knife a bunch, and um, having a knife that's easy to sharpen is, uh, it's a huge plus for a lot of people. I know a lot of you guys out there, you're not really great at sharpening knives or you just don't know how to sharpen knives so you want to be able to get something pretty simple and be able to still get an edge on your on your blade you don't want to have to go out and buy really expensive stones and advanced sharpening equipment to uh, to get your knife you know sharp again so uh, what I've done is I've just uh, continuously stropped this knife each day after use and it's held a fantastic edge and in fact right now I'm gonna give you a quick little cutting demo with it alright guys uh, this knife has been uh, beat to crap as you can probably tell and uh, I'm just going to do a little cut test in front of the camera here just to show that uh, the one good thing about the let me get down here so you can see my face <laughs> the one good thing about the AUS uh, 8 stainless steel is that you can easily touch it up so I'm just going to show you a little uh, demo here That was weird. <laughs> Got a little circle out. Anyway, just going to grab some of that uh, seatbelt material. Bear with me a second here. Got some seatbelt. Plenty of uh, blade length as you can see here to get to that. Oop. One piece. Not as aggressive as uh, some of the other blades I've tested on the seatbelt, but uh, it's resharpened. It's just not that razor's edge that it came with uh, from the factory. Of course, you can uh, touch it up even better. I try to pretend that uh, I'm caught in an accident. Oh no, <laughs> I got my gold seal recon, and I have no pressure here, so I can't actually keep it around my shoulders, but. Let's say it's tight in against me. Just kind of cut through. And now I'm free. So, 
that was a really horrible demonstration. I need two people to kind of hold it there tight against me, but anyway, um, yeah, the, the softer steel, it's kind of a downside, but the one good thing about it is you can thrash on it, and you can easily touch it up. Um, this is just a quick little sharpening job, but it got the job done. It's not uh, scalpel sharp right now, but if you have a little bit of time, you can certainly get it scalpel sharp, but very cool little knife. I shouldn't say little, it's actually a big guy, and uh, so far so good. So anyway, just a quick little uh, cut demo for you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the little cutting demo there. Um, let's continue with the review. Uh, I know it's a little late, but let me go over some specs on this as far as size, because I mean it is, it's a big knife, and I don't really know if you're getting that across by watching this video, but you can see in my hand here, I mean it's a beast. It's a large folding knife. Full four inch blade here. Um, closed position is five and three eighths inches. And of course, in a fully open position, if you can add, it comes up to nine and three eighths inches. So yeah. It's not a little knife, and of course, being a larger knife, and um, inherently, you're going to have a little bit more weight. So this one weighs 5.3 ounces. Like I said, for me, it's a little bit cumbersome for the uh, uh, summertime carry with the shorts. It really does drag the shorts down, and if you're walking at a faster pace, it kind of just swings back and forth, and you really feel it. It, it doesn't go unnoticed, but um, it is where it is. If you're not looking for a large, heavy knife, then you probably wouldn't want to buy this anyway, so... Like I said before, it's it's kind of redundant to say, yeah, it, it's a little heavy for, for what it is. It's a heavy knife. It's meant to be heavy. It's meant to be used, you know. It's a really, really hard-use folding knife. And for me, it's it's kind of contradictory, if you ask me, because folding knives, they really they're have, they have their limits. So to make a folding knife tougher and tougher and tougher, I mean, come on. If you really need a knife like this, I mean, if you really, really have a use for a knife like this, do yourself a favor and put it in the drawer and get yourself a nice fixed blade. You'll be much, much better off. Um, again, due to the size and the weight, why why even bother with a folder? I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's just me. But I just, I, for me, it's kind of novelty. It's just uh, I like heavy-duty knives as well. But uh, I'm not going to be chopping with this. I'm not going to chop a tree down. Uh, I have no use to do that. And if I do need to chop a tree down, I'll grab myself a fixed blade. It's all about grabbing the right tool for the job. But hey, you know, one person's garbage is another person's treasure. So uh, it's not my my first choice for a, a hard use knife, but it's still it's still a very cool knife at that. And I did have a lot of fun testing it over the last couple months now, and uh, it really has been a fantastic knife. Um, and you know what? The, the biggest uh, bonus to this knife is you really can use it a lot, and you can use it hard. And it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. That's the, the biggest selling point with this one. Price on this is $60 pretty much everywhere you look. Uh, full retail is $104.99, which uh, to me is kind of crazy. Uh, I would never pay $105 for this knife. And I don't expect you to either. So that's why I always give you the, the uh, full retail price just to give you an idea of what the, the company is selling it for. But if you don't know how this whole thing works is, uh, let's say I want to sell these knives. And I go to Cold Steel and I say, hey, you know, I want to be a dealer. I want to sell your knives. Give me a hundred of these. Uh, I don't pay $104.99 each. What they'll do is they'll charge me, I don't know, 40 bucks each. And I say, okay, that's great. I'll take a hundred at four, you know, 40 bucks each. And then I resell them at $60. So every time I sell a knife, I make money. Uh, of course, it doesn't cost the uh, the company $105 to make this. Who knows what it costs them? Maybe it costs them $20 worth of materials or whatever. But that's just how how the whole thing works. You know, it costs this amount of money to make, and then they sell it to someone for a little bit more, so the company makes money. And the person who buys a bunch of them at once, they resell them at a little bit more, and everyone's happy, except for you, the consumer. You never get to sell it for more. <laughs> you buy the knife, you end up using it, and then it's worth less money. But, hey, that's just how it is. But we still love our knives, don't we? Um, yeah, so, Cold Steel Recon 1. The new gens are very cool. I did have a uh, an original Recon 1. And uh, I w let me just say right now, awesome, awesome improvement. I'm not really into the uh, Tanto as much as the, uh, uh, the Clip Point version. But this is one I happen to get in a trade. So I'm still happy to get it. Um, and if I didn't already mention, there's four versions of this knife. You have the uh, Tanto, then you have the Clip Point, then you have the Tanto, or both versions come in either full plain edge or partially serrated. 
So Tanto plain edge, like you're looking at right here, Tanto partially serration, you know, about yay long or so. Then you have the clip point plain edge and then clip point partially serrated. So four versions. Um, the biggest thing with this knife too, and I'll probably end up doing a completely separate video on it, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, the triad lock. The triad lock works just like a lock back, um, but all the, the tension is really on this pin here that's in the frame. And I will do a, uh, a separate video, I think, in the future, explain that in greater detail, because I don't want this review to be ridiculously long. But um, it's, it's it, guys, I'm telling you, it is extremely, extremely tough. And outside of, say, a, uh, a Balasong or perhaps a paratrooper-style knife, uh, I can easily say that this has got to be the strongest locking mechanism that I've ever come across. And uh, that's saying a lot, because there's a lot of different knives out there with a lot of different locking mechanisms. And I think it even surpasses uh, a frame lock um, by far. It, it really is a uh, fantastic design. I wish that other knife companies can adopt it, but of course you have copyright laws and all kinds of stuff involved with that. But uh, it is really, it's fantastic. I will do a separate video on that in the future. But uh, it's treated me well. Like I said, it's, it's overkill in my opinion. If I grab a folding knife, it's because I need a folding knife. I don't need a pocket machete. Um, if I really want to do some hard work, I'll grab the right tool for the job. However, it floats a lot of people's boat, and uh, I still think it's a wicked, very, very cool knife. Um, very impressive, very intimidating, um, and very useful. And I think it's well worth the 60 bucks. If you like the way it looks, uh, I think you'll, you'll love the way it performs. It's just, it's not for everyone. It's just a big old crazy knife. But I like it. I think it's really cool. Last uh, little note on it is there is a, a lanyard hole on here. Um... <laughs> Some people who get these knives, they do end up doing some batoning and some bushcraft style work with it. So if you are planning to do that, first thing I'll suggest is ditch the pocket clip completely. Throw on a, uh, a very functional wrist lanyard. Wrap that thing around your wrist. You know, if you're going to be chopping and stuff with this, uh, you really don't want it flying out of your hands and ending up who knows where. Uh, maybe in your foot or <laughs> across the yard and your neighbor's cat. Who knows? Just, uh, just be careful with it. But uh, yeah. Pretty much it. Um, oh, I guess you guys want me to talk about traction and jimping and all that kind of stuff. Well, there is none. There's no jimping on this, but the G10 here is such an aggressive texture. It really is uh, one of the grippiest G10 patterns I've seen yet. Really, really locks in on your on your skin, so you have no issues whatsoever with this ever flying out of your hands. I don't care if your your hands are soaking wet or soapy. It's got a tremendous amount of grip on it. And of course, with time, that will wear a little bit. Um, if it's something, if you find that you don't like a knife with uh, scales that are very grippy, it's not a problem. Say you like this knife, you know, hey man, I really like the way that looks. It's really cool, it's perfect, but uh, I don't know. I hate aggressive G10. I like something smooth. No big deal. Take the handle scale off, hit it with some sandpaper, a little palm sander, take you about 15 seconds. Do both sides and you're done. Uh, you can make it smooth. You can't take a smooth, you can't easily take a smooth handle and make it grippy, but if you're not into the grip, you can easily sand uh, that down with some uh, some finer sandpaper. But anyway, that's all. Still a very cool knife. Like I said, I think it's well worth the money. Um, it's just not something I would carry normally for EDC. I did for a while for the review, and I did some uh, a lot of major cutting outside, did some uh, some limb trimming which is pretty cool, and I, I cut a crap load of bottles up for recycling. So I was still very happy with it, and you know what? At the end of the day, it will outperform a lot of different folders for a lot more money. So uh, I still think it's a, it's a fantastic buy. It's just, in my opinion, it's not a great EDC knife, or not a, especially not a great knife to uh, carry around your pocket um, in the summertime. But that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. I thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.